You want to know one of the main reasons why people don't really do what they know they're supposed to do? It's because they are so flippin' worried and occupied over the opinions of people around them. So, we're going to go into the four things that we need to talk about and address and consider and look at when it comes to dealing with the opinions of people coming up in today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is DM Junior here called to help empower and inspire women to step up to the fullness of their potential while also keeping their personal, relational, and spiritual lives intact. Okay, so I have a question for you. Are you worried and concerned about what people think about you? Are there things that you know that you want to do? Are there things that you have in your heart to do? Are there things that you're contemplating about doing that you're not doing because you're worried about what people think about you? If you are, I want you to write it down in the comments below. Share it with the community so that you know that you're not alone because it's really important for you to know that this is a common issue that we are all dealing with. Here's the thing. There is no person on this planet, I don't care how anointed, I don't care how talented, I don't care how gifted, I don't care how sexy, I don't care how beautiful, I don't care how built and muscular and chiseled that person that they are, I don't care who they are, everybody struggles with what people think about them. We all think and we all wonder and we all take into consideration a little more than we should the opinions of other people. And that's nothing to feel guilty about. That is just the way of human nature. We are made for community, we're made for relationships, we're made for coming together, we're made for supporting one another, and because we are, if we find or if we feel that the people that we're involved with or the people that we're in community with or the people we're in relationship with don't agree with what it is that we want to do or don't see our point of view as right or valid or don't support us in what we believe we're supposed to do, it can cause us to feel a particular way about that. So, how do we handle the opinions of people? The first thing you need to remember when it comes to people's opinions is this. It is as readily available and as free as bacteria. You don't have to ask for bacteria. You don't have to pray for bacteria. You don't have to cultivate bacteria. You don't have to look up YouTube videos on how to get bacteria. Bacteria is everywhere. And as free and as readily available as bacteria is, so are people's opinions. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you are at things. I don't care how good you look. I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how talented, generous, kind, compassionate, empathetic you are or any other admirable trait that I'm sure and that I know you have, everybody is going to have opinions about stuff. And if you are setting out and if it is your intention to place and put your mark in this world and to be an influential contribution to the betterment of society, you're going to have to get used to people's opinions and them voicing them even when they shouldn't. And on top of that, you have got to get to the place where the opinions of people run off your back like water off of a duck's back because if you don't, it will drive you crazy. So here's the thing. Jesus Christ, who is a very important person in case you didn't know, because you know I'm going to mention that every now and then. I have to throw it in there for good measure. It didn't cost you anything. If you read some of the accounts in the Gospels about Jesus' life, it was quite interesting. There is one account of Jesus in John 8. It is actually hysterical to read it. In this chapter in John, it's describing the ministry of Jesus, and within that chapter you are seeing all of the opinions that all the people within the society of that time and what they thought about Jesus. Some thought he was God in the flesh. Some thought he was an amazing prophet. Some people thought he was the devil's son. Some people thought he was a drunk wine bibber. Some people thought he was confused. Some people wanted to kill him. 
There was a point where even his brothers didn't even believe what he had to say and who he was and were questioning him and trying to pressure him into doing things that would eventually have caused him to die prematurely had he acted on it. Within that entire chapter, we see all of the many varying opinions and thoughts that people had about Jesus and whether what he did was right, whether what he did was wrong, everything from him being God in the flesh to an, an amazing man to Satan himself that needed to be killed in stone and even plotting his death all in that one chapter and you know what it didn't phase jesus at all because he knew step one people's opinions is as readily available and free as bacteria there is nothing you can do about it you can only take preventative measures against it but you cannot prevent yourself from encountering it you can only develop an immunity against them that is step one you are going to come across people some will be more vocal than others some will be more aggressive than others, but if you plan to make a difference in this world, people are going to have things to say about it, and you're going to have to get used to it. And you're going to have to not take it so personally either, because let me tell you something. You, you're not as special as you think you are. And you are special, but you're not so special that you're the only person that people have things to say about. No, people just get at giving their opinion when they don't need to be given their opinion. And if they weren't doing it to you, they won't do it to somebody else. So you don't need to take it as personal as you do. Know that people have opinions, and they're going to feel the need to voice them. That's step one. Step two, now that you realize that people are going to give their opinions, whether you want them or whether you ask for them, now you need to get to the place, step two, where no one's opinions and thoughts and suggestions about you, your life, and what you should or should not be doing with it has greater weight than yours. No one else's opinion, no one else's thoughts, no one else's ideas should have greater weight in your life or a greater effect on your life than your own. If you allow the opinions of others to have a greater weight in your life than your own opinions and thoughts and convictions, that is a clear indication that you either lack confidence, you lack self-esteem, you're not in tune with your intuition, and you're dealing with self-doubt, which we've covered in other videos, and I encourage you to watch them because that is bad news theirs. No one's voice, thoughts, or opinions should weigh higher than your own. Let me tell you something. I have had the wonderful privilege of hearing all of the opinions that people have about my life, my lifestyle choices, my ideas, my points of view, my choice in food, the things I like to do for lunch, the fact that I go to the library and I don't like to socialize as much, the fact that I like to plan things meticulously, the fact that I journal all the time, the fact that I'm 27 and love Disney, the fact that I'm 27 and still know what Little Bear is, or Franklin, or Disney Channel, or all the other kids shows that I was supposed to outgrow, which is total complete bad words, insert them as you will. I get opinions that come to me all the time and I've come to the place where not only do I not allow it to phase me, but I actually love it and I find it entertaining because here's the thing, my voice, my opinions, my thoughts about how I live my life and what I know to be true for me is the highest ranking voice in my life. Other people can come alongside of me, they can counsel me, they can offer me feedback, but their words will not carry any greater weight in my life than my own life, than my own thoughts and my own opinions. Now, if they have an opinion that resonates with me and that confirms with what I already know and believe to be true about my own life, so be it. It's confirmation. That's wonderful. That's awesome. That's great. But if it's not, I chuck it. No one's ideas, no one's thoughts, no one else's opinions in your life to have a greater weight in your life than your own opinions. If they are, and if that is not the case, you really need to work on your self-awareness, your self-confidence, and being in tune with your intuition. The third thing to keep in mind when it comes to the opinions and thoughts of people is this. There should be no opinion given or expressed where there is no responsibility. So I'll say it again. There should be no opinion voiced, expressed, or presented where there is no responsibility. So here's the deal. If they don't have any skin in the game, they ain't got nothing to say about it. Now see, if we just took that step by itself, that you can apply that to your life when it comes to other people's lives, and you should also apply it to your own when people are giving you their opinions about your choices. If they don't have any skin in the game, meaning they don't have any emotional investment, they don't have any spiritual investment, they don't have any financial investment, they don't have a right to say anything, and you have no right to expect 
and you have no right to do anything that they're telling you to do. Now, I, this, this one step was absolutely astounding to me once I understood it and once it, it, it dawned on me that, hey, people's opinions don't really matter for this reason. I'll give you a prime example. I was told for I don't know how long that I needed to work out. I was told that I had a good build. I was told that I had a good frame. I was told that it wouldn't take me it wouldn't take me long for me to get built, for me to get chiseled, blah, 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 blah. I had no desire to work out at the time. People thought that it would make me less feminine. They didn't say that, but they implied it because people tend to do that. There were a whole lot of innuendo. Watch for people's innuendos. And don't pretend like you don't hear the innuendos and pick them up when you do because nine times out of ten, it's not you being suspicious, it's actually accurate. Watch people's innuendos. But I digress. They gave me every reason imaginable. They gave me every statement. They presented it to me over and over and over again. But you know one thing that none of them did? As much as they had to say about me needing to work out and why I needed to work out and how good I would look and how quick I would gain, on, gain muscle, not one of them gave me a dime for a gym membership. Not one. But yet they had so much to say about it. Now, years later, I decided that I did want to work out and I did want to bulk up and I did want to change my lifestyle, but it's something that I wanted to do for me and I made the investment into a gym membership and sure enough, I did bulk up and I did become muscular and then they did notice and they did say and they did have a lot of wonderful things to say and it is wonderful and I'm still involved in it today, but it was my decision and my choice. I didn't do it because of their opinion and I didn't go based on their opinion because you know what? They didn't give me a dime to invest in it. They had a lot to say but they didn't invest anything into it, and people will do that. Here's the deal. If they think that that guy is so perfect, and it's so perfect for you, then they need to go on ahead and marry him if you don't believe that's what you need to do. If they think that that job is so good and so awesome, then they need, they need to go to that job, because here's the thing. no one, They're not gonna live with that guy when you marry him. They're not gonna be the one that's miserable because you have to join and go to a nine to five that you hate and that you dread going to. They are not the ones that are going to have to pay the bill on that building or on that car or on that ha or or the tuition for kid your kids to be in private school in that part of town. They're not going to do any of that. They just have a lot of talk and they don't have any investment or any skin in the game whatsoever. So therefore, their opinions weigh as much to me as a gnat and it should be the same thing for you. Not to be disrespectful and not to shoot them down and not to be rude and obnoxious. But if they don't have any skin in the game, they don't have a right to say anything. Do not allow the opinions of people to weigh in on you more than yours, and especially don't consider the opinions of others when they don't have any skin in the game. Now, I've been in church for a very long time. I have been helping and supporting and working with pastors for a long time, and it never ceases to amaze me how many opinions people have about how pastors run their churches. And when the truth of the matter is, not one of them pay the bills. Not one of them pays the mortgage, and when things go, uh, go crazy, None, none of them have, it won't be anyone else's responsibility, so you know what, you don't have anything to say. You don't have anything to say about how the boss, your boss runs the company. You don't need to have anything to say about how your pastor pastors the church. You don't have anything to say about how to per, a person or a couple parents their children because they're not yours. You don't have any skin in the game, so you don't have anything to say. The same should be applied when it comes to your own life. And the fourth thing you need to realize and consider when it comes to dealing with the opinions of people is, you're going to die. I bet you weren't expecting that one, were you? I just threw that one in there for a loop. I know you weren't thinking that was going to be step four, but there you are. You are going to die, which means this. At the end of the day, when you cross over from this life into the next one, you are going to stand before the Lord, and you are going to give an account for your life. And you know who will not be there? Nobody else. So in all the opinions of all the people around you may have about your life, about your choices, and about your decisions in the whole nine yards, some that are good, some that are well-meaning, some that have hidden motives and intentions that they're not bold enough to just come right out and say, when you stand before God at the end of your life, none of them are going to be there. So why should their voice and opinion matter to you that much? It should not. The only time a person's opinion and idea and thought about your life should carry any weight is when it resounds with you and is confirming with a conviction that you already know to be true for yourself. If it doesn't, I apologize, but when I die, you're not coming with me. No one's coming with you. No one is coming with you. You know how we say you can't take treasure with you to the grave? You can't take your money with you to the grave? Well, you can't take people with you either. Sorry. Death is an extremely personal experience, just like birth, unless you are, unless 
you know, you were a twin, and even so, it was still a very individual experience, and so is that. Ain't nobody coming with you, and neither are their opinions going to come with you. So in all the opinions that they have about what you should or shouldn't do or where you should or shouldn't go, if you act on those things and then have to give an account for it when you cross over to the other side, they're not going to be there to give an account for why you did it. It's going to be up to you. So realize that you are going to die. And when you die, you're going to have to give an account for your choices and decisions, even if those choices and decisions were made as, as a result of the opinions from others that you took. Don't do that. Here's what I decided. If I'm going to have to give an account for the actions and choices that I made in this course of my life, I'm going to give an account for the choices and decisions that I made that I want to make. Not the choices and decisions that I made because I felt other people needed me to make them. So, when it comes to people's opinions, no, they are as free and available as bacteria. Two, no one's opinions and thoughts should carry greater weight than your own. Three, there should be no opinion where there is no responsibility. If there is no skin in the game, you have no right to say anything. That includes celebrities and people that you see from afar, by the way, sidebar. And four, you're going to die. And none of those people are going to come with you. So if you're going to have to give an account for what you do or don't do in this life, it should be based on the thing that you truly want to do and you truly believe was right to do, not what someone else wanted you to do. I promise you, if you apply these four thoughts, when it comes to dealing with the opinions that people present to you, your life will be so much simpler and so much more fulfilling. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. And if you did, if you can do me a favor and leave a comment down below, let me know what you got out of the video and where you're watching from. I would really appreciate that. Also, don't forget to click subscribe and the bell button as well so you can be notified when I have new videos coming out so I can keep encouraging and empowering you in the work and call and purpose that you have in your heart. And if you would like an additional dose of inspiration, you can come over to dnjr.org, which is my website there. You can sign up to my newsletter where you'll receive more inspirational insight, tools, tips, and advice that I don't share anywhere else. Enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, you only get one life. You might as well live it to the very best of your ability.